It is Friday, and instead of looking ahead to the weekend, let's look ahead to the distant future. What may our world look like, and how will technology transform humanity? That's the big question. We're hoping Dr. Stephen Novella can answer that for us. He's a neurologist and associate professor at Yale. He's also the host of the podcast, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, and is out with a new book, The Skeptic's Guide to the Future. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. So walk us through your vision for technology in the distant future. So, I mean, there's a, obviously technology has been transforming our civilization, our everyday life. You know, it seems to be accelerating. You know, most of us alive today have lived through the digital revolution. It's hard to imagine what our own lives was like even 10, 20, 30 years ago. So we tried to, you know, look at the arc of technological history and see how, how can we extrapolate that into the future? Can we look ahead to 2050 or maybe 2100 and see where these technologies are going to be? And we also look at emerging technologies, things you may not be really aware of yet that are just about to change our world and talk about how that might happen. Do you foresee us living at some point in a Jetsons type world, flying cars, or yeah. is that just not realistic? So we, we take a, a, a long look at the futurism of the past, like in the previous attempts at imagining the future, sometimes today, you know, we're living in, you know, the the, the futurism of people before us, um, and the, the, generally speaking, the you know the visions of the future don't line up with what's actually played out. They predict a lot of uh, progress that doesn't happen, and they miss the real progress that happens. So we always imagine the future with flying cars and, and you know, robot butlers, of course, right? Uh, two things that have not yet happened. It's never going to happen the way people imagine it. We, and that's, again, something else we try to figure out in the book. Like, how, what kind of mistakes do people make in the past in terms of trying to imagine the future, and how could we correct that? How could we do better by, by not making the same mistakes they made? And in the book, you mentioned that we have to be skeptical. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about that. Why should we be skeptical on the outlook of the future? Well, for a couple of things. One is we have to be humble about our ability to predict the future. And to be honest, like you can't really predict the future because there's nothing inevitable about the future. Uh, really, this is about how our choices will affect the future. Like we could be having different technology now than, than we currently have. If people in the past made different choices, we could all have have electric cars and be flying rockets instead of jets or whatever. So a lot of it is about saying, all right, what choices do we make, do our descendants make, and how will could that play out? How could that affect the future and you know the medium term and in the longer term? And of course we could you could always predict some broad brushstrokes. Like we know computers are going to get more powerful. We know that robots are going to be a bigger part of our lives. We know that we're going to be able to have more powerful control over our genetics and things like that. So there are some, some things are fairly predictable in the big picture and it's fun, a lot of fun to think about and to research how that might play out. In the book, you say technology will not save us from ourselves. We can use our technology to create or destroy, free or enslave, to enlighten or control. These are the choices that will dominate our future. So you emphasize the importance of critical thinking. How concerned are you about having both critical thinking and this excitement for technology? Yeah, well, that's what scientific skepticism is. That's what we do with our first book, with this book, is try to combine an enthusiasm about science, about technology, about where the future can take us, but at the same time acknowledge that we need to have, you know, a pretty realistic critical thinking, because not everything can happen, not everything is going to happen. Uh, there's a lot of false claims, not only about what's happening now, but about, you know, like what might be happening in the future. So you have to combine that knowledge with logic and critical thinking and humility, a lot of humility about how our brains will try to deceive us, and how other people might try to deceive us. Um, and so you get, at the end of the day, you get to the, that, I think, a really good combination of that enthusiasm with realism. And I think that's the only formula to try to sort through like all the possibilities that there are before us. Is there something that you're looking forward to in, in, in like that's te technological that could happen, probably won't happen, anything that you've got your eye on? So I think the one thing that, I'm, I'm, I'm a neurologist, right? So that, it's not surprising that I'm very interested in the, the future of neuroscience. One of the like, really exciting emerging technologies is a brain machine interface. You know, we're getting better and better at being able to have 
our, you know, computers talk directly with our brains and control computers and therefore machines with our brains. And like the proof of concept research is all done. It's now we're just at the point that we just need incremental technological improvements. So again, we can predict, yeah, you know, we're going to see this century, you know, the ability to have a matrix type of, you know, pretty detailed communication with machines. And that's, that's definitely going to be a disruptive technology. I mean, you could live your life in a virtual reality, for example, I mean, going to the extreme end. But even short of that, like having people who are paralyzed be able to control their prosthetics, like robotic limbs, they seamlessly incorporate that into our, our brain and our ability to control it. That's happening now. And we could pretty much see where that's going to go into the future. Exactly like you said, there those are advancements that are happening right now and mm -hmm. are likely uh, to continue on. It's fascinating to watch, fascinating to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. The Skeptic's Guide to the Future will be available September 27th, wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.